Um, this is one of the most contentious bills that we've had to um, tackle in the house and for a while I, I thought it would be best to just stay silent because we voted on it, we voted on it already and then um, we all knew the process that it went through but as I was looking at the rage or the anger in social media and the reasons why people were enraged and angered, it was obvious that it was coming from a sense of fear because of misinformation. So, um, as the elected representative of the 4th District of Leyte, yes, I am not a principal author of the bill, but I know that what was out on social media was not what we debated on the floor. A lot of it was based on fear, not on facts. And in a democracy, my stand is yes or no, it's okay, but let's level the discourse on facts, uh, not misinformation. We really need an anti-terror bill because the Human Security Act of, 2000 of, se of 2007 had no teeth. And I think our friends from the military are the biggest defenders of this because you are on the ground, you know what it's like. So many of those who have been convicted were convicted on articles under the revised penal code. So terrorist act na, but even the police are afraid to really uh, bring them to justice on account of terrorism. Now, in, as far as fears are concerned about kaya ilang magong ipedal pili sa social media is you cannot already, you cannot anymore express dissent. It's unconstitutional. Uh, what are their other, what are their other accusations? But, and then they try to level activism with terrorism, which should not be the case because terrorism is such a grave and destructive act that you cannot strip it down and make it insignificant by liking it to wearing a cap with graffiti or expressing dissent against the government. So, diha pa lang, we have to read the bill with the right target in mind and we have to also make sure that we not just read the bill but we understand it and we comprehend it not in parts but the provisions as a whole. To be fair, no? So, and then they will quote their lawyers. They will say, but my lawyer friend said that it, uh, it will violate the Constitution and human rights. Um, we can go into an endless debate about this, lawyer against lawyer. What I want also that, um, what the detractors or those who are keen on peddling wrongful information must know is that when this bill was heard in committee hearings, right even before it um, reached the plenary, Sa sugod pa lang sa kinabuhi of any measure taken in the House, all stakeholders are already invited to give their position paper. So, present ha ang human rights, the judges, the lawyers. So, uh, we can go into endless debate about who is right, whether lawyer defending the bill, another lawyer protesting against it. But in the end, we have the Supreme Court to decide. So the, the bill now is in the hands of the President. It was certified as urgent. On the part of the House, we did our, we did our part. We threshed it out on the floor. And to answer accusations also of why pass a bill like this at a time of COVID. Remember, terrorists will not give us a holiday just because we are vulnerable. Terrorists will not say, Uy, di na nato sila igun. Uy, kay di COVID, ba yung taong na sila? No. The enemy will always attack when we are at our weakest. There is no perfect time. There is no perfect law. We only have now. No, so we must act now. The very valid fear that the law can be abused. Tinood, that is not unfounded because we have seen through the years, even before the term of President Duterte, even before the term of uh, President Aquino, we have seen how the law has been abused. Can you think of any law that cannot be abused in any way? And all the lawyers in the group said, theoretically, all laws can be abused. So we cannot shoot it down, we cannot shoot needed legislation on that basis alone because if permi lang tayo ana, Tingalig maabuso, tingalig maabuso, wala na gitay mapasa nga balaod. And we will be a lawless people, we will live in a lawless country. That is why every law, having said that, that is why every law has safeguards in place to prevent as much as possible abuse. We have safeguards in place for both the accused and the possible offender. It works both ways. That is why also laws have to be revisited because we do not we cannot foresee intervening circumstances. We do not know how, how it can be abused in the future. 
we do not know how it will how the how the terrorists think so it will have to be revisited either to be amended or repealed so that is uh, we are doing our parts as citizens no? um, in the legislature in the legislature we craft the laws and then executive they implement I ask for the support of this bill for those who are against it I ask that you read and comprehend it and see the value of the bill because now yes wrongful arrest is a possibility but then we have to weigh which risk weighs heavier on the Filipino people wrongful arrest but the the one arrested still has legal recourse or terrorism there is no preventive mechanism in place it is all reactive so it's like saying because innocent until proven guilty. That does not work for terrorism because by that time, na detonate na ang bomb, na anay ni buto, na anay na matay. So gaplano pa lang, nakakita pa lang, na pa science, na nakakita, na naanay terrorist funding, na anay financing, nagplano pa lang, putlo na. Ang kaning kaaway, di ginini mo ang angon, tinudun ginini mo. Kaya kung di ginini mo tinudun, maunahan man ka. Okay? So, God bless our men in uniform. Uh, the bill is up to, it's in the president's desk now, it's up to him to veto or not. In 30 days from the time it was given to him, uh, it will lapse into law. And in the end, uh, it is the Supreme Court who will decide whether or not it is unconstitutional. But on the part of the House of Representatives, we have done our job.